Well, it's time now for Media Watch. Emma James is here with us in the studio for that. And uh, Emma, we're going to start with uh, what is very much the talk of the town on the social media sites today. Uh, yesterday, we had a direct plea from the US whistleblower Edward Snowden uh, calling on President Obama to pardon him. And uh, a lot of people support Edward Snowden. A lot of people criticise him. What have you been looking at today? Yes, absolutely. Well, Edward Snowden himself um, has actually been keeping fairly quiet on social media since he did that big address asking for people to really get behind his uh, desire to be pardoned. Um, so he seems to have been letting other people do the talking. What he did tweet was this, that the world's three leading human rights groups asked the president to reconsider the war on whistleblowers. And what we're seeing a lot of on his uh, Twitter feed are messages like this one, um, which says, Edward Snowden fought for our freedom. It's time he had his own. Now, the organisations uh, that are backing him very strongly are Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and the American Civil Liberties Union. Um, and if we look at Amnesty's page, it does appear that they are trying to really shame Obama into doing something, and uh, maybe even appeal to his vanity a little bit because they talk about his legacy. They say here, leaving Edward Snowden in limbo will be a stain on President Obama's legacy. And of course, we are in the last couple of months now right. of President Obama's presidency. Time is um, ticking. Exactly. If and Donald suppose, Trump wins, I think he would be even more unlikely to pardon Edward Snowden. Well, apparently it's equally unlikely whoever gets in. Hillary Clinton doesn't believe he's a whistleblower, so she doesn't want to back him in any way. And Donald Trump uh, has been even more forthright than that, shall we say. So there's little chance beyond uh, the end of President Obama's presidency in the immediate future, at any rate, that he will manage to get a presidential pardon. Um, if we take a look at this, this is the official page of his campaign, pardonsnowden.org. Uh, and if we click on that uh, to show you what's down below, they actually have a running counter of the number of days left of President Obama's presidency in which he can possibly act. And we are down to 126 days now. So really getting very urgent there for Edward Snowden. Um, now, The Atlantic is one of those examining whether or not Obama is likely to do this. And in this article, um, they talk about it's a long shot, but who knows what the president might choose to do in his last months in office. However, they do say that if he thinks about changing his mind, if he's considering it because he has refused a pardon in the past, they believe here that his advisers will tell him, no, this will play into all the hands of your critics who say that he's weak on national security issues and also that he has a habit of apologising for America. OK, and that in turn could harm Hillary Clinton, I suppose. Uh, well, he's got the support of the uh, major human rights groups like Amnesty, as you, as you showed us there. He's also got a lot of celebrities and politicians behind him, hasn't he? Yes, absolutely. And uh, one of the most prominent uh, political figures of the moment, Bernie Sanders, he might not be in the presidential race anymore, but he has a lot of people who like him a great deal, as we know from when he was on the campaign trail. Um, he has given his backing for clemency. It's not the most sweeping of endorsements because uh, what he says is that he acknowledges the importance of the information that Edward Snowden managed to get out there to the American public. But he says there is no debate that he also violated an oath and committed a crime. So this is really the, the sort of dilemma that a lot of people face when they're looking at Edward Snowden. Do they view him as a whistleblower, as a hero, or do they think of him as a traitor? Mm. Um, Susan Sarandon is much more fulsome in her praise. The American actress says he did this country a great service for no personal gain and at massive personal cost. Um, now, what could do more potentially to sway the opinion of the president of the United States is public opinion. And that means that this Snowden movie, the Oliver Stone movie that has just been released, it right. goes on general release on Friday in the United States, it doesn't come to France till November. Um, but apparently, Wired magazine, for one, thinks that Edward Snowden really does need this hero treatment right now. And what they say in this movie is that it really bleaches out the shades of grey. It's become a very black and white issue. And he is painted very much as the hero. Um, of course, Snowden does divide opinion, as, as we've said. You know, it, it, is he a traitor? Is he a whistleblower? Um, and certainly Wired believes that this may well sway the court of public opinion behind Edward Snowden. Could the Hollywood treatment swing it for Snowden? We'll have to wait and see, won't we? Uh, let's uh, come back to a story we're covering, of course, here in France. I've just been speaking, in fact, to the head of one of the major unions uh, in this country. He says he's not going to give up protesting against the government's changes to labour laws. They're very determined. But as we saw, more ugly scenes on the streets of Paris and cities across France today. 
Yes, absolutely. I mean, we did have a bit of a summer pause um, for the protests because they were so regular, weren't they, for some time there. But um, as is the French way, everything stops for August at the very least. Mm -hmm. um, and so there haven't been any demonstrations for a while. But this one here is the image of the day. A CRS riot police officer in flames after a firebomb or Molotov cocktail was actually thrown at police officers. Um, and that is the image that really seems to be encapsulating the, the feel of today. This journalist, uh, Jean-Pierre Dutton, Dutton, says, um, you know, how dreadful that this justified and necessary protest against changes to employment law has led to this image. And it really is very shocking. This video here captures the moment as uh, fellow officers try to extinguish those flames. Uh, we understand that the police officer was burned. It's not believed to be very serious, but he would, did receive burns to the leg as a result of this uh, this particular event. Um, but one last thing to show you very quickly, there is also an image uh, that is very, very shocking indeed, showing journalists actually being targeted by the CRS riot police officers. Um, they charged at the journalists and one leave one of them writhing on the floor having been hit by a baton, uh, somewhere that you don't want to get hit by a baton. So scenes in Paris, really not good today. Okay, Emma, thank you very much indeed. Emma James there with Media Watch.